Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Greg Michalowski. I'm the Chief Currency Analyst uh, for FXDD. I'm also on Twitter. My Twitter ID is Greg Mike FX. Uh, this uh, web commentary has actually changed here. Uh, let me put up my new new commentary uh, page. Uh, www.4xlive.com uh, is uh, my, where you'll find my commentary now. Uh, join the uh, team at 4xlive.com. Still part of FXDD, though. So um, you can uh, find uh, all my uh, technical commentary there, as well as other other commentary from market professionals at 4x Live uh, at that site. Um, and uh, I'm here with a special webinar for the people at FX uh, Street. I want to first of all thank those people for the opportunity to be able to present uh, here today. I apologize for not getting the uh, topic in uh, on a timely basis, but uh, nevertheless, uh, happy to be here today presenting and we're going to be talking a little bit about risk, 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 defining, limiting, and accepting risk uh, here today. Before we get started, let me remind everybody that trading foreign exchange is risky. Traders can lose all or, or uh, some of their capital or most of their capital trading foreign exchange in this uh, webinar session. I'm not going to give any buy, sell, or hold recommendations. It's going to, go, going to mentor you, educate you on what I've seen in the market, ways that I look at the market from a trader's perspective, and I uh, hope that you learn from that. So this uh, disclaimer has been up there for a few seconds. Hope you've been able to take a quick gander of it, understand what we're going to be accomplishing here today, and get uh, going um, and think positively about what we're trying to do as a trader, ways that you can improve yourself as a trader. So let's get started. Um, this was a, a slide uh, for those people who are unaware. Chairman uh, Bernanke of the uh, federal FOMC has been giving some, uh, well, actually classes uh, at George Washington University over the last uh, few, oh, a week or so, I guess. Uh, he gave his uh, third class yesterday, and this is, this is one of the slides from his second class uh, last week. And during um, his presentation, um, he talked about uh, some vulnerabilities that occurred that co helped cause the debacle, I guess, or the problems within the U.S. banking system, and which uh, led to all the problems uh, within the U.S. economy and perhaps global economy, or no doubt global economy. Uh, and uh, what he said specifically, or what he wrote specifically, is perhaps lulled into complacency during the great moderation. Borrowers and lenders took on too much debt slash leverage. Uh, banks and other financial institutions failed to adequately monitor and manage the risks they were taking, for example, exposure to subprime mortgages. And my friends, uh, folks, uh, this is a primary foundation uh, for all businesses, in my mind, including the business of trading. The foundation of any business resolve, revolves around this idea of risk, defining risk, understanding risk, limiting risk, accepting uh, risk. And it seems like the uh, chairman here is suggesting that during this uh, time of what he called great moderation, that the banks um, took their eye off of this idea about risk. They didn't adequately monitor and manage the risk that they were taking. They used too much leverage in their um, business. And doing those things lead, led to the vulnerability in the private sector that the uh, chairman spoke of and ultimately in, in this, uh, into the debacle that occurred, the financial crisis that has occurred over the, and still playing out, that has occurred over the last uh, two or three years in the global economy. And uh, for you as a trader, you're still a, you're a business as well. And so you have to uh, be aware of, um, of risks and understand your risks as well. So I kind of put... Uh, a little uh, change in the wording here, perhaps low in complacency during market consolidations. Traders took on too large position leverage. Traders failed to adequately monitor and manage the risks that they, that they were taking. Traders, too, have a vulnerability, and retail traders have a vulnerability, especially if they 
start to use too much leverage, if they start to take on too much risk, if they don't manage or monitor their risk, you can get in trouble, can't you? You can um, uh, uh, really uh, start to suffer in your trading. It is all about risk, 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 and you as a trader have to understand your risk. You have to define your risk. You have to limit your risk. You have to accept your risk. And if you can do that, you're not going to have these vulnerabilities that, unfortunately, the businesses around the, uh, you know, particularly the financial businesses around the world got themselves into. They got themselves into this mess that, that, that we're in now by taking their eye off the ball, uh, taking their eye off the risks that are inherent in their, their own business, the businesses that they should have been, been uh, knowledgeable about. So all like successful businesses, I'm not talking about, you know, I mean, the banks recovered, I guess, you know, because it's been given free money, but like successful businesses, retail traders need to focus on risk, risk, risk. And so what type of risk should you as a retail trader take uh, specifically in your trades? And what most um, people and analysts uh, might uh, say, including myself, and I'm sure you've had others uh, uh, during webinar sessions here on FX Street, is that the ri uh, rule, rule of thumb as far as risk is that you should risk 1% to 3% of your account balance on any one trade, 1% to 3% of your account balance on any one trade. And the reason is that traders who are disciplined in the risk limits will find that they stay in the game longer, stay in this trading game longer. Traders who are not disciplined, what will they do? They will blow up their accounts. They're going to have the large losses, and these large losses are going to be hard to recover from. They're going to um, make traders uh, feel like... Um, uh, boy, they really lost a lot of their account. Let's try to get it back as fast as we can. And so going back to the chairman's comments, they start to take their ball, their eye off the ball. They start to over leverage their position, and then they don't understand the risks going on with the position. It ends up kind of snowballing in your face, and you start to lose more than you gain. There's nothing like um, putting added pressure on yourself in trading as well by taking larger positions, increasing your leverage. Traders who do that, what do they do? They increase their fear and their trading and fear. You, no one trades well when you have fear. No one does anything well when you have fear, when you're dealing with fear. Yes, you might get an, uh, uh, an adrenaline boost, boost uh, from it, but there is um, often just negative, um, uh, negative uh, uh, possibilities when you're trading with fear. Even when, when you have a, a gain in a trade and you have too much risk on Chances are you're going to take your your, your uh, profits way too soon, um, and uh, that that's no good for you e either, especially when the market's type, type uh, trending. So uh, what you have, uh, what traders who are disciplined and uh, who are, are and understand the risk limits and use a, a, a proper risk, uh, they're the ones that uh, stay in the game longer. And stay in the game is the name of the game in foreign exchange trading. So how do you define risk? Uh, um, defining risk. Uh, uh, what, are, what are the benefits of defining risk? And one of the things that you as a trader um, should be aware of is that if you're going to risk a certain percentage of your account, um, what does that translate into as far as position size, as far as, as, far as your, your risk? And really, really the, um, the way I look at a trade and, and I want to make sure that you get this uh, a point as well. Is when, when you look, when I look at a trade, I want to make sure that I I know where my risk is, where I define my stop loss level, and from that point, um, then I start to look back and start to figure out, okay, well, what kind of kind of position size could I have with this, uh, with my defined risk, given my account balance, and so the, the steps of the math uh, in determining all of that start with your account balance. So let's take an account balance with an example of a 10,000 in account. Let's say you want to risk 3%, no more than 3% on a trade. We'll just use that as our example of 3% risk. So what kind of dollar risk are you willing to take on a $10,000 account? Well, uh, if you take 3% times 10,000, you, you should uh, limit your risk or, you, you know, I implore you to limit your risk to no greater than $300 on that trade. Now, 
from that point, what you have to do is then take a look at the potential trade that you have looking in front of you and determine that if you were to buy or sell at uh, the current market conditions, where would your stop be? And let's just for this example cut to the chase and say that we've done the analysis of the chart. We'll get to that in a little bit later, determine what our risk is. And we say that our risk is going to be 20 pips on that trade. That's where we think the mar you know, our decision as far as market movement is wrong. And so once you know that you have a 20 pip risk on a trade, you know that the risk is $300 uh, is the maximum they can lose on a trade. It now, you now start to work backwards to figure out how many lots of, of this, uh, particular currency pair um, are you, you know, can you trade? And so the lots uh, to trade is calculated by taking that dollar risk, that $300, uh, $300 dividing by the value of a pip. Uh, so let's assume that we're trading the euro versus U.S. dollar. If you're trading the dollar versus yen or the dollar versus Swiss or something where the dollar is the um, uh, the primary currency pair, the first pair currency in the uh, currency pair, then you have to uh, make sure that you've calculated the dollar value of a pip for that currency pair. But let's just assume that we're going to be using the euro versus U.S. dollar, which we all know has a $10 uh, uh, per pip uh, trade um, uh, uh, value, value of a pip. So you take the $300 divided by 10, and then you figure out the pips of, to risk on the trade, 20 pips. And you get what you get is the 1.5 lots that you're able to trade. In other words, if you lost 20 pips times 1.5 lots, five lots times $10 per pip, you would have a loss of $300 um, dollars on that trade. Um, uh, and uh, so that's the way. That's what you uh, uh, look at when you start to determine your uh, position size in a trade, and you start to figure out, okay, what is 3%, and what does that all translate into? So that's step number one in a trade. Now, traders who would uh, who uh, use that type of analysis and limit their risk as far as uh, 3%, uh, they are at a benefit in relation to some other traders who, you know, may have perhaps don't limit their risk to uh, 3% and may look to, you know, look to keep on that trade a little bit too long and perhaps take a 10% loss. And I wanted to show you the effects of what that, imp or the implications of that uh, if the, uh, if you were to uh, have that quote unquote blow up trade that blow up trade that that, that may take ten percent of your account in one trade so in this uh, slide, what I have here is the account balance of ten thousand dollars and if you were to have a ten percent decline um, on your first trade or that that trade with that ten thousand a balance, you would lose a thousand dollars on and you would end up with an ending account balance of nine thousand dollars now let 's assume that you uh, find uh, uh, discipline in your next uh, trades going forward uh, and you know what would it take to get back that thousand uh, dollars just in winning trades so what you, what you see in the subsequent lines going down is is what would happen if you made three percent on the nine thousand ba balance well you'd make two hundred seventy dollars your account balance would go to nine thousand two hundred seventy uh, you take that nine thousand two hundred seventy make three percent on that and you uh, get another two hundred seventy eight and that's nine thousand five hundred forty eight uh, continuing on uh, with the next three percent trade so on and so forth and you can see that you'd have to have four straight winning trades uh, and those four straight winning trades would have to total a total of uh, ten point six eight percent in order to get back to what you lost on your initial trade of ten ten percent so you have a lot of pressure on you to not only get the trades right going forward making your three percent on the trades but also um, uh, you have to make more than what you lost back on on the trades because you're dealing with a lower account balance going forward and so so you know although you get the thousand dollars back you have to make ten point six eight uh, percent uh, in cumulative of that those um, uh, in these uh, three trades, 3%, 3%, 3%, 1.68%, it's going to get you back to the 10,000. Now, let's contrast to the trader who is more disciplined in his trades, like you now, and hopefully um, what you do is you take a 3% loss in your trade. Not, you know, not the end of the world, folks, you know. You only lost $300 in the trade. Now, if you had that 9,700 9, and you made it 3% on the next trade, you've got everything back but $9 of what you lost. It's much easier uh, to get all that money back. And so you don't have to put the pressure on yourself. You don't have to increase your fear. You don't have to increase your anxiety. You don't have to have this feeling of, I've got to get it back. I've got to get it back right away. And that is the difference between successful traders and unsuccessful traders is 
that you are more in control. You are in control of your emotions. You are in control of your fear, fears, and you um, have the ability to get that money back. Uh, getting some uh, questions here um, uh, from uh, Gold. Uh, uh, appreciate uh, you keep those uh, types of comments. Uh, th th this has nothing to do with that, and I'd be happy to speak with you in regards to that, but uh, let's not ruin my train of thought by having uh, comments like that um, uh, in in the uh, uh, commentary here today. I really appreciate it at the moment. I'll be happy to talk to you about it, uh, and I don't necessarily uh, believe it, but we'll go on from there, okay? Um, all right, so what type of risk do uh, traders uh, face? Um, uh, say three hundred dollars, you can only three trades get it back. <coughs> um, let's um, uh, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, types of risks that traders uh, traders uh, face in their trading. What most people would read in a textbook uh, is this: is that there are three types of a uh, risk. There's market risk, there's event risk, there's liquidity risk uh, in your um, in your trading. Now, market risks we face every day in the market. We have risks that the market's going to move up, the market's going to move down, uh, and uh, that is what we face every day in in the uh, in the market. And then we have uh, what is uh, called event risk. And event risk is that the the risk that the mar uh, a economic event's going to come out uh, and it's going to uh, move the market one way or the other. So there may be an economic release, maybe a central bank talker talking there may be something like a natural disaster an earthquake perhaps that would uh be devastating uh we, there may be uh there may be other things that uh, come out uh stock market uh, may move one way or the other all these things are event risks that occur during the day and that is a type of risk that u.s trader face and then we have a different type of risk that is uh, liquidity risk and liquidity risk um, often comes with event risk when uh, when something happens an event happens um, there can be a decrease in liquidity and that decrease in liquidity could cause uh, when, when there's less liquidity in the market there's more uncertainty and that could cause uh, not only your broker spreads um, moving but also the interbank spreads moving as well uh, that is what happens in a real market a market where there's a, a increased risk out there you tend to have things called liquidity risk as well so there's three types of risk market risk, event risk, and liquidity. That's what you'd most likely read in your uh, textbook about as far as risk in trading. <clears throat> now, these types of risk, I would say the retail trader has very little control over. Let's think about market risk. Do you have control over where the market is going to go, up or down? And my answer to that is no. You as a retail trader cannot move the market one way or the other. You do not have the uh, the control to force the market one way or the other. Think of your account balance unless you have millions and millions and millions of dollars in your account. You don't have the zeros at the end of your account that cause the market to move one way or the other. Those are the institutional traders, and those are the traders really that uh, control the market, folks. They are the ones that move the market one way or the other. Um, it is uh, it is uh, through them that you get uh, the market movements, the market trending to the uh, upside or trending uh, to the downside. We are seeing some movements uh, here to the downside here in the euro versus U.S. dollar. It wasn't caused by a single retail trade. It's likely caused by uh, a uh, larger order that came into the market or larger orders that came into the market. So those those larger traders who have the ability to move the market. So they take a market that's balanced and they move it into imbalanced market. And that um, so you as a retail trader do not have any control over the market risk. Now, there's also event risk, and do you have any control over the event risk? Uh, well, not unless you actually know what the um, event or the number is going to be released, what it actually is going to be, and I would suggest that even, you know, the top economists don't know what the numbers are going to be. Those economists who have all the economic econometric models that are able to predict things like unemployment and so on and so forth, you know, how often are they right? Well, you know, not not often at all. In fact, there's always a, you know, a little bit of a miss one way or the other. It's very rare that they get it right on the nose from a consensus standpoint. And so it's kind of hit or miss there. So you don't, you don't necessarily have any control over the event risk as well. You can take a guess where you think the market, market, uh, or what the event might be, but you you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that even if you knew what the event would be, that you knew which way the market was going to go. So this type of risk that you have out there 
you really have little control over as well. And liquidity risk as well. Liquidity risk comes when uh, there's a surprise or event risk and uh, increases uh, market volatility and market choppiness, if you will. And that uh, that can't not be controlled either by you. It's controlled by those market makers in the market who make up the prices, and they uh, they are affected by the event risk, just like you. And so there is a dry up of liquidity risk, and liquidity risk can cause the market to to uh, or um, you know the market to press either bids bids and offers going wider or uh, choppy conditions in the market that co that are caused uh, as well uh, and all this is comes under the heading of liquidity risk so um, the question uh, uh, becomes if traders cannot uh, control market risk event risk liquidity risk how then can you as a trader define and limit risk uh, I'm, I'm talking about you know risk and defining risk and limiting risk and you know, if, if we have no control over it, how can we define it and limit risk? And the answer to that becomes by using tools that are available to us all. And what tools do I talk about that are, uh, that, uh, that are available to, to us to define risk? And I uh, propose, you know, so let's say fundamental analysis uh, or fundamental tools. Um, you can have a understanding and read all the uh, newspapers and understand what is going on in the world as far as fundamental analysis, but does that exactly define your risk? Do you know where you are going to be wrong on that trade? Uh, because after, after all, there's a lot of things that go into fundamental analysis that we don't know about. There's a lot of things that kind of pop up. Can we predict a um, natural disaster, for as an example? No. Can we predict necessarily what Chairman Bernanke is going to say? at any one time, or can we predict what, what the press might misinterpret of what he has to say? And the answer is uh, no. So we as a trader, really uh, utilizing a, a tool like fundamental analysis, have little control over risk by uh, looking at fundamental analysis. You cannot unequivocally define your fundamental analysis uh, or, or risk by looking at fundamental analysis. Um, can you use something like correlation uh, of one instrument versus another? You know, oil prices, gold prices, silver prices, commodity prices, uh, stock market. Can we make a, a, a correlation that will allow us to define our risk in our currency trading? Um, and the answer to that is no as well. Why? Because currencies um, don't always correlate um, the way that the historic, you know, the historical number suggests. So if you have an 80% correlation, guess what? That correlation may change to 75 or 70 or it may go to 90% correlated. Um, that difference in changes in correlation, you know, could mess you up as a trader and you could find a, a position where you do not have control over your risk. You cannot define your risk. And if you cannot define your risk, you cannot limit your risk, and you cannot really understand uh, where your limits are, and you have that, you have the potential to have that blow-up trade. Um, also, during that, you know, if the market is not correlated, so it's in that 20% time uh, or 20% of an 80% correlated, uh, you know, instrument, let's say, or two instruments, um, it, in that 20%, what if you know the market? Uh, starts to go in opposite directions. Well, you may think that the market, you know, the euro is going to go up because of uh, the stock market going on, uh, uh, up and the risk on trade, and the euro could actually go down. And so, again, you don't know what your risk is. You cannot define this around correlation. Uh, can you use uh, certain technical oscillators like RSI? And I point up this uh, chart right here. This is a five-minute chart of the euro versus U.S. dollar, and here the RSI is getting overbought at the 70 level. That level uh, suggests that the market is overbought and the potential for the market to move lower. And at this point right here where the market starts to, or the RSI starts to uh, roll over a little bit here, at least go sideways here, uh, the, you know, someone may be tempted to sell the market at this level. Um, well, what happens is that the market does not go lower. The RSI continues to move move higher and higher and higher. And this increases uh, uh, uncertainty, and this also increases the chance of loss from the trader. So, and, and does a trader really know how to define his risk in this move to the upside? No, there's no way that they can define unequivocally define the risk by using things like oscillators. Oscillators give an overbought or oversold condition. They don't tell you that my risk is here. I have to get out here um, at this level, and so it becomes a, 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 a um, an issue or it becomes a, a, a problem for a trader who uses an oscillator. So there are ways to use oscillators. My, my colleague James Chen uses oscillators in his analysis. 
but what he uses it as is a secondary trading tool. He's not going to make a, a primary trading decision off an oscillator. I find that they, they tend to be redundant. I can use other tools that will allow me to uh, trade trade the mar market um, more effect effectively, more efficiently, and without fear, um, as opposed to using an oscillator, which is not going to specifically define my risk. So those aren't the tools that we want to use. We don't want to use fundamentals. We don't want to use correlation. We don't want to use oscillators. Um, so, But how can you define risk? And the way that I define risk is by using technical tools that give what I call an un, um, unambiguous trading bias. And uh, what an unambiguous trading bias is this. An unambiguous trading bias is one that gives buy or sell de decisions. It gives bullish or bearish. It's either going to be bullish or bearish, either going to buy or I'm going to sell, um, and that's it. That, I don't want to have overbought. I don't want to have oversold. I don't want to have 80% correlated. I don't want to have something that uh, because I think uh, you know Greece is going to fall apart or something that Spain is going to be the next next shoe that drops. Uh, to, so I'm going to sell sell the euro without understanding where my actual risk is defined. And so what I what I term unambiguous trading tools um, are that give an unambiguous trading bias. Those are the types of tools that I want. Um, and so. E, uh, uh, even though I use these um, unambiguous technical tools, my market risk, my event risk, my liquidity risk are not erased. They're not erased. I'm still going to have those risks in my trading. <clears throat> However, um, if you understand your risk by defining risk against certain technical levels that, uh, by using technical tools that give you an unambiguous trading uh, decision, buy or sell, you are now in control of your risk. So we go from a position of being not in control of risk by looking at market risk, event risk, and liquidity risk, and putting ourselves in control of risk by looking at technical tools that are going to define my risk and limit my risk. We are still subject, uh, we are still have the potential to lose on that trade, but because we're using a technical tool that defines our risk, that limits our risk, our risk can be minimized. We can minimize our risk to that 3%, and that 3% makes sense now. It's at a level where we think the market has a potential to either find support or resistance at, and we're still subject to you know whether the market or not believes it, whether the event risk um, or the liquidity risk goes in our favor, but at least we're defined our risk, at least we understand our risk, and we can move from, from, from the, forward from there. So we are now in control. Another offshoot of being in control of your risk is, under, is, the, is by having an understanding of your risk, you have what is called less fear. And fear is a trader's worst enemy. I've already spoke to that um, in, er, earlier in this presentation. You have to do what I call steer clear of fear at all times. And if you can, you're, you will not um, have that, the, that anxiety, that, uh, uh, that the pressure that you have in your trading if you have too much fear. So traders who are in control of the risk, traders who define the risk, are able to be more in control of their risk and in control of their fear. So how do you define risk and limit, uh, limit risk? Well, I use uh, technical tools like moving averages and trend lines. And so let's get into some examples, and then we'll look at some live, live markets and take a look at what technical tools are, are telling us um, in, in the live markets as well. So um, here we have a, a picture of the euro versus US dollar. And as I said, I was putting this together. Um, yesterday uh so um goes back a little ways but um again look at the uh, current current conditions and current current uh uh, uh charts as well uh, but i want to uh, introduce 100 bar moving average and the 200 bar simple moving average uh here uh they are simple moving averages blue line is 100 the green line is 200 bar moving average and um i'm going to put uh, some arrows up here on the screen and ask you you know can you can risk be defined and limited at each of these levels um, at this level right here where the market uh, has fallen below the 100 bar moving average and come down to the 200 bar moving average, any trader that um, sees this and, and wants to be more bullish, uh, you know, this moving average is moving higher, maybe it's a corrective, corrective level um, that um, means something uh, to them. We are not looking back, but at this point right here, um, they can define risk and limit risk. I don't really care what, you know, what your reasons are for buying or, uh, or for doing a trade at this level. The only thing that I care about um, in my trading, in understanding uh, 
what my risks are is being able to define define it. If I can't define the risk, don't do the trade. That that goes for, you know, if the market's just moving quickly because of some fundamental news that came out, if I can't define my risk, I'm not going to do the trade. There's only one way that you as a trader can defi define a risk, and that's get a technical tool like this. So um, when the market comes down to this 200 bar moving average right here, can, ri can traders define the risk and limit their risk? Sure, because if the market stays above it, it's bullish. If the market goes below it, it's bearish. Now, you as a trader, you know, have to give yourself a little wiggle room at these uh, te technical levels. Um, if there's nothing and, you know, we don't see anything here that could define a risk against this level right here, what I typically do is, you know, give it you know, 15, maybe 20 pips below the 200, uh, 200 bar moving average, 20 at the most, really, because if the market were to break through the 100 and then break through the, the 200 bar moving average, chances are it should be going lower. I just believe that there, there, that is an indication from from the market that there's more, more sellers and buyers in the market, and the market has the potential to move sharply to the downside. So in in in, uh, uh, in that case, um, I I don't have to risk a lot. I've defined my risk against this level. I believe this level is a a level that the market watches and that the market finds value in, and and more importantly, is able to define the risk against. And that is not only important to you, it's important to them as well. Everyone out there who is successful as a trader is in, interested in defining their risk. And so they support the price at that level. Um, and quite frankly, if the market would have gone below there, I would think the market would move sharply to the downside. Instead, it found support against this level and helped push the market above the 100-bar moving average. Note here, when the market moved above that 100-bar moving average, a correction came and found found support against the 100 bar moving average. Again, why? Because risk can be defined against the 100 bar moving average. We held the 200, we moved above the 100, find support against the 100, move it to the upside. That is the way you as a trader are able to be in control of the risk. If something fundamental came out, an event came out that caused the market to below, move below the 100 bar moving average at this point, guess what? You get out. You have a losing trade, you get out. That's trading but at least you are in control of your risk, you are in control of your fear, you are in control of your trading, and you get what I call trader's luck. Late trader's luck is when you define your risk and you limit your risk, and the market agrees with you. The event agrees with you. The liquidity agrees with you, the, and, and the market moves up. That's the only way. That's the way you control those risks is by defining your risk against a technical tool. Well, let's move forward. The market starts to correct down further, further here, and... Um, uh, we get uh, close to the 100 bar moving average, and we find a nice little floor here along the bottom. I could probably draw a trend line that goes right across the low here, and you can see how the market found support, support, support. You have support against a, a, a lower trend line, and you have support. I'll get that. Uh, well, I'll put it up later. Uh, support against a lower trend line, also support against the 100 bar moving average. So a trader who is um, interested in buying the market at this point right here, uh, because he sees a low here, he sees a low here, he sees a low here, he sees you know, this low uh, uh, along the bottom here or here, right here. Uh, th the trader has uh, a, can define risk against what level? The blue line right here, the 100 bar moving average. So traders can define the risk. They can limit the risk against that level, and they don't care what the market risk is. They don't care what the liquidity risk is. They don't care what the event risk is. They know that their stop is below that level, and they can get out at that level, uh, you know, give or take a few pips with uh, any sort of slippage. I wouldn't do it in front of an unemployment number, uh, but, you you know, you, you have – that protection against technical level. The same goes here. The market has a, uh, traders have potential to buy here. Risk is limited. Uh, you know, I wouldn't. You know, you can risk all the way down to here um, if you if you wanted wanted to. This uh, what is this level? Somewhere around the 59 level. This level comes in at you know 45. So you're risking about 15 pips down to the 200 bar moving average if you're buying against the 100 bar moving average. You know, if the market moves up, it doesn't. You know, you only get a one to one return uh, to the high here. Uh, didn't exactly do what you thought it would do. The market should, you know, uh, you're, you're probably looking for the market to move to the upside. So in this case, if you bought here, you'd probably be selling here and getting out uh, with very little gain on the trade uh, and or getting out when the market hit this high and failed at that high. So, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you define risk that you're going to make a huge profits on the trade. What does it mean that you define risk, you limit risk, and you have the ability to, the uh, potential to have better gains in your trade? Um, 
Market moves below the 100 bar moving average, start to find support against the 200 bar moving average, move below that level. All these levels, these levels against these, these moving average lines are levels where you can define your risk, you can limit your risk, you can get in on, on uh, a trade and be in control of the risk that you're taking. And so the, that is, um, uh, that is what you as a trader need to focus on. You can see here how the market t held the 200 bar moving average. If you came with this level right here, what would be your risk? The blue line right there. This isn't, this isn't, you know, this isn't this amount here. What you're risking here is very small amount on the trade. You're in control of the trade. You're in control of the risk. You don't have, you don't have to have a care about what the market risk is, what the liquidity risk, what the event risk is. You are totally in control. Same here. The market has the same, same trade decision right here. When the market reaches a low, it comes up here and, uh, tests the 100 and 200 bar moving average. And if you're lucky enough to catch that trade, to find your risk against that level, the market moves really sharply to the downside and you have the potential for much bigger gain on that trade. When the market moves back to the upside, where do we find resistance against? 100 bar moving average, move down a little bit, break below the 100, stay in between the 100 and 200 bar moving average. Market's unsure what it wants to do at this point right here, isn't it? It's telling you that. It's staying in between both the 100 and 200 bar moving average. It's finding support against 100, finding resistance against the 200, finding support against the 100, and finally, breaks out to the upside, moves sharply to the upside. Risk can be defined against all these levels. These are technical tools that uh, 100 bar moving average is a technical tool that you can use in your trading that will define your risk, that will limit your risk, and put you in control of your risk. Now I'm going to take uh, the, the uh, camera off that uh, PowerPoint because I want to go to the um, a live, uh, or a lot, let's take a look at the chart um, as it uh, was uh, presented uh, and look at some uh, trend lines as well. Now, can everyone see my chart up there with the uh, euro versus US dollar five minute chart? Give me a yes. Okay, good, good. All right, that's good enough. So this is the same same chart that we looked at in the uh, previous slide, but now I've added uh, just simple trend lines. Trend lines define highs to highs and lows to lows, and uh, can also be moved used as a way to uh, to find a floor like right there. <coughs> This is what we uh, looked at before, and so traders who are looking at this floor level right here could define their risk against 100 bar moving average market moves off of that level and moves higher. Now, now let's uh, now let's take a look at uh, the, this this channel here uh, to the downside here. This channel is defined uh, when you have a high here and you high here. You can draw a trend line that goes across the tops here. So as early as this point right here, we could draw this trend line. This trend line could be in place at this point right here. When the market reaches this high and starts to move down, at the same time you could you could take this line, you could put a parallel line that comes and can be drawn to the bottom side right here, and, and you put it against this low right here. And lo and behold, the market uh, starts to, uh, or when the market uh, reaches this high, which also is where the 100 bar moving average is, starts to come down to a low, and we find support against our lower trend line. So can traders define their risk against that lower trend line there? Yeah, there's an opportunity to define your risk against that lower uh, trend line and the market moves higher. Now note here when the market moves up and tests our 200 bar moving average at this point right here, and we're looking at this trade where the market can define its risk against the 100 bar moving average. Traders could use that level and also the trend line here, which is now established from these uh, points, one, two points along there. So we have the trend line, we have the 200 bar moving average, we have the 100 bar moving average. That gives you an opportunity to find your risk in the market the moves lower. When the market moves back higher, we do move above the 100 bar moving average and the, uh, or above the trend line here, and even the 200 bar moving average, but staying below the or 100 bar moving average, staying below 200 and moving back below these three key levels here, really sets up the move to the downside here. It's just failure above here, fa failure above the 100, and failure to get above the 200 which kind of leads to the market's move to the downside. And that's what we see. And that's why we see this biggest move to the downside because oftentimes it's the failures that happen here that, that give traders like the, the courage, if you will, to move the market to the downside. If you as a trader bought the market on the, on the move above this 100 bar, uh, or above this trend line right here, what would be your um, risk on the trade? Well, your risk would be if the market moved back below it, right? And what would be your target on the trade? Well, the target would be getting through these key technical levels because you have to realize that if you're getting above the trend line here, yes, that's bullish. That should move the price to the upside, but you still have to get through the 100 bar and the 200 bar moving average in the process. 
That's why it makes this level so important. That's why when you start to have multiple levels here where the market can see it, they can understand it, they can define their risk against that level, and they know that if it moved above it, uh, the market would go should go higher because it's breaking through all three to the upside. If it fails, then the market has a much more potential to move to the downside uh, just as a result of that defining risk, limiting risk, accepting, uh, or limiting, uh, limiting the risk, and the market moves down against that level. Uh, when the market moves up here and breaks above or breaks above the 100 bar moving average, it also has this trend line here, this trend line, which, you know, failed up here, held, held three different times, and now it's starting to move above that level. So note here how the market finds support against the underside of the, what I call the underside of the trend line, the broken trend line here, and the 100 bar moving average, 100 bar moving average starting to move higher. So again, we have our three tools right here, our three or our three tools right here coming together at one level under the trend line, trend line uh, 200 bar moving average. And that helps give this energy to the market, helps the market move to the upside. It's these levels, folks, that you, as a trader, put the control in your favor. Take the risk out of the market and are able to define risk, limit risk, and accept risk in the uh, market in the mar uh, and uh, that uh, that is ultimately where you're trying to go. I added a uh, uh, a term in that last one, define risk, limit risk. We're talking about defining risk and limiting risk. The third step in any trade, and this is most important, uh, folks, as far as risk goes. If, there, if the three most important things in trading is risk, 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 you have the first one, defining risk. You have the second one, limiting risk. The third one is accepting risk. And I want to speak a, a second about accepting risk. Accepting risk is something that I cannot tell you to do. I can tell you that um, and and try to teach you, I guess, that this is a level where the risk can be defined. This is a level where risk can be defined. This is a level where risk can be defined. All these levels are around these technical tools are where risk can be defined. And I believe that risk can be defined at these levels because you tend to get some sort of movement away from these levels. Uh, and that's what you want as a trader. Either you're going to be right and the market's going to move in the direction of your trade or you're going to be wrong. Um, let's say you bought the market right here and the market is going to reverse and go the other way. So you are, um, you have a, a, the ability to limit your risk, to define your risk and, uh, and have the potential for good gains. Now the third part is this, this idea of accepting risk. And you as a trade, uh, I can, I can't tell you to accept risk. You are the only one who can tell you to yourself to accept risk. But it is very important for you to actually tell, say to yourself, do I accept this risk? Can I take the risk that I, that, um, selling the market here below the, uh, the trend line here, I can accept the risk of a move, a potential move that would take the price above the 200 bar moving hours and I'd lose this amount somewhere around this, this amount on that trade. You have to be able to accept that risk. And the importance of understanding that risk and defining that risk and accepting that risk in, uh, is that it will, it will allow you to trade freely. It will allow you to trade with less fear. If you can accept the risk, the risk is above the 200 bar moving average. If you can say to yourself, I accept this amount of risk, I accept this potential loss on this trade, you, when the market starts to move down to the to the downside, you are going to be trading more with a clearer head. You are, you are not going to be trading with fear that the market is going to whip around and head back through that level. You are going to be more in control of, uh, of uh, and, and more likely to stay on this trend right here because you've defined your risk against that level. And by the way, once that risk is defined initially, if you initially get a, sharp, a move to the downside, you can start to move your stop down, move it to the 100, move it to the trend line. Because if the market were to go down here and then break back through that trend line, break back through that 100 bar moving average, chances are it's not going to hold this time. Chances are the market's going to whip around because it didn't, didn't gather the momentum on the failure to the downside. It's all about putting the odds of success, reading what the market is saying, having the market do uh, you know, uh, have the market then agree with you and do what you think it's going to do. And that um, that is where, um, you know, all these all these uh, risk things come into play here. So you have to define risk, you have to limit risk, and then you have to accept risk. And if you can accept risk, do the trade. If you can't accept risk, don't do the trade because you're going to have too much fear no matter what happens in that trade. So you have to accept risk, and then once you accept risk, 
you're able to think clearly and uh, be able to define your risk as the market moves uh, moves to the downside. By the way, the market bottom bottom off around this uh, low right here um, uh, in this um, in this trade, boom, right right around there. And so, was risk defined at this level right here where the market bottomed? Yes, risk is defined here. It was defined here, and it was defined here. So, a uh, very clear uh, level of risk where risk can be defined. Now, let's move forward here in the euro versus U.S. dollar and take a look at uh, what happened here as the market um, moved moved forward, and the market um, uh, uh, moved moved to the upside here and then started to uh, go below the 100 bar moving average and moved a little lower. So, we're in this non-trending phase here. But even in this non-trending phase, we start to see some patterns develop against the 100 and 200 bar moving average. Two moving averages move together, come back down, uh, move sharply to the upside, come back sharply to the downside, move back up, come to our uh, ceiling here, move back down, uh, settle around the 100 and 200 bar moving average. Yesterday, all during the New York afternoon session, we stayed below the 100 and or the 200 bar moving average. You could also define a trend, nice little trend line across this level here. Stay below, 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 come down to the bottom, draw a nice little trend line along there. Uh, market moves above, uh, again, the 100 and 200 bar moving average converge at this point right here. That's often a, a sign that the market has the potential to uh, to um, move uh, one way or the other away from this level. Market starts to move to the upside, and we see the break here today. Uh, look at the uh, formation here as the market comes down through the 100 bar moving average, tests the 200 bar moving average, moves back up to the 100 bar moving average, and then breaks through to the downside here. Um, uh, and uh, 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 we break through our um, trend line here as at the same time start to move move down down uh, a pretty rapid clip uh, to the downside here. Well, more rapid than what it's uh, what we've been used to, uh, but moving uh, nevertheless uh, to the downside. So you can see here how the market uh, uh, performs around these around these uh, levels. Uh, risk can be defined against these levels. Risk can be defined against uh, tr uh, tr uh, trend lines as, as well. Uh, one, two, uh, three different points break break through that level, move sharply to the downside. I was a little um, disturbed by this move back to the upside, but this was a failure of a, uh, a corrective move to the upside. It took the price back above the trend line here, back above, uh, we didn't even talk about Fibonacci retracements, but above a, uh, uh, well, just above the 38.2. Really wasn't, actually it wasn't. Here's the 38.2. Came came right up, really up to the, toward the 38.2 of the move to the downside here. So it's not unusual for this to happen. I was a little disappointed that the market was able to move above these levels, but once we uh, we failed above that level, the market started to come back down, started to use this whole trend line to the downside right there. So I'll be happy to take away, uh, some of your questions uh, here uh, and before we wrap up. Is the market telling us not to trade the euro dollar and look for other pairs like uh, euro Aussie da 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 or uh, or uh, Sterling Aussie, or even Aussie versus the U.S. dollar. Uh, that's uh, from Carlos. Just uh, came in here. Um, no, uh, Carlos. Um, uh, I would. Uh, what I, what I uh, look for is non-trending markets, and non-trending markets tend to transition into trending markets. So I'm kind of a uh, you know, and and also you know, I think the euro dollar still is. Uh, uh, it, it it is uh, you know still it has most narrow narrowest bid offer spread it has a uh, it, it tends to have uh, decent ranges just because the market has been in a non trending range over the last uh, couple of days it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's dead in fact it just means that the market is not sure of what it wants to do right now and so you um, when it decides. That's when you tend to get an uh, back to an imbalance. So we are in an imbalance market over the last 48 hours. Now we're working into uh, more of a uh, uh, imbalance market, uh, and um, uh, and so so I think that um, you know it might be that uh, the, this pair actually takes control. Now you comment that the uh, other pairs, uh, the other pairs of the past week, can make money, but unfortunately not the euro, euro versus U.S. dollar. Well, you're absolutely um, right in that, and I commend you for uh, uh, being able to recognize uh, the movements in those different different uh, pairs. Uh, let's go to the Aussie versus uh, U.S. dollar here as an as an example. We've been in a nice little trend here over the last uh, few days to the downside. Actually, I had a nice little trend, little trend to the upside and trend to the downside. And note here, uh, Carlos, in the Aussie versus U.S. dollar, how the market uh, broke through this trend line, and maybe you recognized that, uh, recognized um, the failure up here at the um, 
uh, at the at the top in particular when the market uh, broke through this double top right here um, and failed up there it left that nice little uh, you know that, that tail there on that uh, candle at that point and then started its move to the downside when we broke through that line where we find resistance right against that trend line Carlos right uh, and then we came right down to our 200 bar moving average that was our next target corrected up broke through that 200 bar moving average came right to the 100 bar moving average found a little support against that, moved up a little bit, and then broke through that level. So this has been trading very nicely to the downside. So, um, so yeah, you know, I mean, you made you made hay when the sun was shining over, over in the Aussie versus U.S. dollar while the euro was sitting there doing nothing. Commend you for that. It's the same analysis. It's the same analysis um, in in the currency pairs. And just, but uh, what I warn is just because the euro is not trending now, that it doesn't have that it. it uh, it may not trend in the future. Um, I don't necessarily believe that. If the euro stays sideways for a, a long period of time, um, the, the, that, that's going to take a lot of profit away from those traders who focus on that uh, currency pair, uh, mainly in the institutional market. And uh, they, uh, you know, they may not be, you know, they may be forced to move the market at some point, allow the market to trend so they can make some make some money too in that. So I hope that I was able to answer your question. Uh let's uh let's go up further to get some of our more uh Reese uh, or other other comments. Um manipulate daily, no I don't know about that. No we don't take your money. Um no thank you. Um uh Greg, why couldn't you risk a fixed amount, say three hundred dollars, it would then only take three trades to get uh back uh uh it would then only take three trades to get it back uh but a but a but a uh fix amount uh so look for a profit of three hundred dollars um well you know you um you could you know it was, it was just for an example purposes uh trying trader uh to to do that and of course you know you could make make it back my my uh purpose of the the example was to show that if you risk, a, you know, and, and it's almost obvious, but, you know, sometimes, and it is obvious, but sometimes looking at, you know, apples and apples, uh, let's say you risk, you know, you, know, you had a blow-up trade. You've got to have four successive trades in a row. If you if you limit your risk by defining your risk, limiting your risk against some of these key technical levels, you are, you, you, you don't have to take that $1,000 hit you know you, you if you if you limit your risk to only three hundred dollars it's much easier to get everything back back in the in the next trade and that's that's that that was my point i guess in that uh spreadsheet um in that calculation is that uh you know looking apples and apples and being you know being um uh you know being conservative in what you're gonna get on the next or not necessarily conservative but being being you know, having a three percent uh, gain, risk reward gain on the on the next trades, you still have to you have to make you know you have to have four you know three and a half or three point one six eight uh, good trades or or actually more than three and a half good trades uh, to get that money back. Uh, and so it's uh, it's just much more difficult to do that than it is to have a one one trade and a little little bit bit little bit more to get uh, get the money back. You you could in effect. Uh, we, you know, we all know that the markets are, are, you know, typically vol volatile enough or have a big enough range, not necessarily volatile, but have a big enough range uh, in it on a daily basis in order to get, get your money back. I mean, you can, in effect, get it back, back, back quickly, but, you know, what happens if you have that $1,000 or 10% loss in your account and the next trade is a $300 loss? Now you're $1,300 down. Now you have to do, f you know, five or six trades get back to break even it's just much more difficult and once people start to lose money um or or you know the, the tendency let me just say this the tendency is that if you have a big loss and you all can answer this uh, yourself but if you have a big loss in your in a trade you tend to want to get it back quicker and oftentimes you're going to do what Bernanke said, over leverage your position 
uh, and over leverage means that you're you know you're not understanding your total risk. You're kind of going out there. You're not you know you're not defining your risk. You're not limiting your risk. You're over leveraging, and, and that gets you in trouble and lead to um, you know because we 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 at the end of the day we're not in control of market risk. We're not in control of liquidity risk. We're not in control of the event risk. And all we need is one of those events or whatever to cause our position to go the wrong wrong way, and now we're out bigger bucks. So anyway, I hope you understand that uh, question, Try and Trader. Uh, in uh, answering, answering that. So, uh, good point, uh, Money ma Magnet. Uh, did you uh, you uh, fib from a low uh, to moving average? Yes, I, I use uh, Fibonacci retracements in um, in the anal in my analysis. I didn't uh, get to that uh, here here today. Just want to focus on just a uh, very simple uh, trading tools. But you are absolutely right. The you know, Fibonacci uh, retracements have a uh, may, uh, are a major uh, major tool that I do use in my in my uh, trading. Uh, and in fact, um, well, let's see here. Uh, take a look at the uh, euro versus U.S. dollar here today. Had a lot, you know, have a lot of uh, big support here against the hundred bar. You know, this 82 level, 80, 82 to 88 level is key. Level here for the euro, euro versus U.S. dollar, 38.2 percent retracement, 100 bar moving average. We uh, dip below that level here, get, got down to what 78 or something on the downside here, and then where do we go? We go back up to the underside of this trend line. So things are looking okay. Let's put a Fibonacci on that um, move. Okay, on this move to the downside, we've stayed um, you know below that 38.2. Let's take a look at this move. That we're still below this move to the downside as well. So 38.2, um, you know, definitely a, a, a you know Fibonacci retracements are another tool that you can use in your trading uh, going forward. Uh, let's see. So uh, yes, yes. Uh, price respects 200. Yep, yep. I can't move me. I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> Is there any time you would not use a stop in trading? Uh, no, you should always, uh, you should always, you, should, you know, when I say define risk, limit risk, that means that you, you do define your risk and limit your risk. So you understand where your risk is. Now, this morning, you know, this morning I was talking, you know, on my, com on the commentary of Forex live and, and when, when you have this non-trending trading range that we've been in here in the euro versus US dollar, it doesn't look like it from, from, you know, a close-up position when you take a longer-term position and you understand a, a longer-term look at it, you understand that you were 48 hours or two days of trading here in a 60-some-odd uh, pip uh, trading range, you, you realize that there's a potential to move a, away and to extend the trading range. And when, when that happens, that's when, when almost, you know, you throw out the other charts, you start to look at the five-minute chart, and you start to look at little clues that the market may give you. So, you know, some clues were like the market broke through the 200-bar moving average and then came back up and tested this 100-bar moving average. And I, I mentioned that, you know, traders may, may, may jump on this idea that that 100-bar moving average held. Why? Because we held above the 100-bar moving average for everything except this one bar during during most of the London session or whatever, however time period this this was right here, you see how it holds above the 100, 100, 100, and then we break below the 100, we go below the 200, we find those dip buyers down here, and and they they take it up to the 100 and they start to move move you know and, and it holds that level. So you know this this was a this was a level where risk could be defined, and I outlined that in my commentary at Forex Live that you know perhaps there's a there's a there's something going on that says, you know, uh, let's start to move this market because markets aren't going to trade in the same. They're not going to trade in the same area for for too long. I mean, it'll trade for it can trade for a while, but the, but it kind of set itself up for this move to the downside. So um, anyway, um, but I'll always use my stop. And 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 I said, you know, we break below the 200, held that 100. You got to have your stop up here. You always have to have your your stop where you're where you're wrong. And try to make it as obvious, you know, by using these tools, it's so as obvious as possible. And I certainly believe that, believe this, this is that because I believe in my tools, I believe that if I see this and then I start to see the market start to move down here and let's say I get, you know, look to sell the market um, because cause it's showing signs of, you know, perhaps breaking down, um, I will... Um, I will put that uh, stop in, and I certainly believe 
that if the market went back up through this level, went back up through the um, the highs here, that we would we would see a different chart. We would see something that moves that would would go up to the top side. I I honestly believe that. I believe that that especially in these uh, types of markets that um, uh, the you know it's gonna it can go either way, and they'll fit the story to fit the print um, uh, or fit uh, write the story to to um, uh, fit the, the the price action later on in regard to it. But uh, in this case, the market moved down. So anyway, that's about does it uh, here for today. Sorry I didn't get to all your questions. Um, and um, but I really appreciate the. Um, uh, the support here today, and uh, good fortune with your trading going forward. Thank you, people at FX Street, Vicky and Maud, and all the other Dinda, all the people there. Uh, thank you very much for your support, and look forward to the next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.